I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on alkenes. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman products and the Death Destroyer book author. I want to go over a question with you, which I call a puzzle question. It's going to involve an alkene and some different reactions. I'm going to go through the problem, but just remember, you have a multiple choice exam, so the answers are going to be staring you in the face and it's going to be a lot easier. But come along and let me show you the methodology of what I want to do. It says here that we have a compound of C7H13Br, and it is optically inactive. On treatment with sodium T-butoxide and T-butyl alcohol, only one product was formed and that would be X. And then I go on to say to you that O's analysis gave 3-methyl hexane diol as a product. What I want to do is for you to show me what is the product X and show me some possible structures for the starting compound. First of all, the minute I see it's optically inactive, inactive would mean that there is no chiral carbons. There's no chiral carbons and you're going to look for a molecule with a plane of symmetry. So that off the bat should, should help you eliminate some of the choices. So we know there's no chiral carbons and there's going to be a plane of symmetry in this molecule. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to see what kind of compound this is. So I'm going to do what's called the degree of unsaturation, which I've shown in another video how to calculate. So let's go over to the board and look at how I did this. The first thing, I'm going to think of a bromine as if it was a hydrogen. So I'm going to think of this as a C7H14. And underneath it, I write the nearest alkane which is a C7H16, you double the plus two, subtract the number of H's and cut it in half. That gives me one degree of unsaturation. Now, one degree means that the compound, which was C7H13Br, has one ring or one double bond. So if it's multiple choice, if it doesn't have a ring or a double bond, I can eliminate it. Now. What I'm going to do is to draw out the compound of 3-methyl hexane diol. And a nice little trick is I'm going to loop this around to make the two O's bump into each other. So I'm going to number the carbons so nobody gets lost. So I'll call this 1, 2, uh, that's why it's 3-methyl, 4, 5, 6. And what I do is where the O's are is where I connect it by tying a knot. So I'm going to connect one to six and get rid of the double bond. And then I'll keep all the numbers the same so you don't get lost, and that would be X. So compound X would be this structure right here. Okay, now the question is, what was the original? Well, the original compound, the original compound we know, C7H13Br was optically inactive and it contained a bromine. That means that this is missing one H and one BR. So the bromine can either be here or the bromine could be here. Well, if the bromine was here, it would look like this. If the bromine was here, it would look like this. Right off the bat, this is wrong because there's a chiral carbon here and there's a chiral carbon here and this would be optically active. And besides, when you treated this with the strong base, you could have put the double bond here, or you could have put the double bond here. If it was this one, first of all, this is inactive. And secondly, if you treated it with T-butoxide, you could have laid the double bond here or here, which would be equivalent. So if you took off this bay, you took this off and, and you removed an H, we would get this and that would make perfect sense. So the original compound was either cis or trans. That we don't know. So notice you can get the two diastereomers. You can get, you have one bromo, four methyl cyclohexane, the cis isomer or the trans. Either one of these isomers could have gave you the product. So as a final check, this is my final answer. 
And cis or trans, that's a no-no, but that, this would be the compound. This is the constitutional isomer. If you treated this with base in the alcohol, you would do the E2. You would take this and this off to give this. And then when you did O's analysis, it would conform to this. I hope that gives you an idea of how to go, we go about doing what's called a puzzle reaction. Okay, good day to you. If you have any questions on this, you can always hit me up in study group. Bye-bye.